Chapter Two of Book Seven of Les Miserables, Volume Two by Victor Hugo. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ian Lynch. Les Miserables, Volume Two by Victor Hugo. Translated by Isabel Florence Hapgood. Book Seven, Parenthesis, Chapter Two. The Convent as an historical fact. From the point of view of history, of reason, and of truth, monasticism is condemned. Monasteries, when they abound in a nation, are clogs in its circulation, cumbrous establishments, centers of idleness, where centers of labor should exist. Monastic communities are to the great social community what the mistletoe is to the oak, what the wart is to the human body. Their prosperity and their fatness mean the impoverishment of the country. The monastic regime, good at the beginning of civilization, useful in the reduction of the brutal by the spiritual, is bad when peoples have reached their manhood. Moreover, when it becomes relaxed and when it enters into its period of disorder, it becomes bad for the very reasons which rendered it salutary in its period of purity, because it still continues to set the example. Claustration has had its day. Cloisters, useful in the early education of modern civilization, have embarrassed its growth, and are injurious to its development. So far, as institution and formation with relation to man are concerned, monasteries, which were good in the tenth century, questionable in the fifteenth, are detestable in the nineteenth. The leprosy of monasticism has gnawed nearly to a skeleton two wonderful nations, Italy and Spain the one the light, the other the splendor of Europe for centuries, and at the present day these two illustrious peoples are but just beginning to convalesce, thanks to the healthy and vigorous hygiene of 1789 alone. The convent, the ancient female convent in particular, such as it still presents itself on the threshold of this century, in Italy, in Austria, in Spain, is one of the most somber concretions of the Middle Ages. The cloister, that cloister, is the point of intersection of horrors. The Catholic cloister, properly speaking, is wholly filled with the black radiance of death. The Spanish convent is the most funereal of all. Their rise in obscurity, beneath vaults filled with gloom, beneath domes vague with shadow, massive altars of Babel, as high as cathedrals, their immense white crucifixes hang from chains in the dark. There are extended all nude on the ebony, great Christs of ivory, more than bleeding, bloody, hideous and magnificent, with their elbows displaying the bones, their knee pans showing their integuments, their wounds showing their flesh, crowned with silver thorns, nailed with nails of gold, with blood drops of rubies on their brows, and diamond tears in their eyes. The diamonds and rubies seem wet, and make veiled beings in the shadow below weep, their sides bruised with the hair shirt and their iron tips scourges, their breasts crushed with wicker hurdles, their knees excoriated with prayer, women who think themselves wives, specters who think themselves seraphim. Do these women think? No. Have they any will? No. Do they love? No. Do they live? No. Their nerves have turned to bone, their bones have turned to stone, their veil is of woven night, their breath under their veil resembles the indescribably tragic respiration of death, the abbess, a specter, sanctifies them and terrifies them, the immaculate one is there and very fierce, such are the ancient monasteries of Spain, liars of terrible devotion, caverns of virgins, ferocious places. Catholic Spain is more Roman than Rome herself. The Spanish convent was, above all others, the Catholic convent. There was a flavor of the Orient about it. The Archbishop, the Kislar Aga of Heaven, locked up and kept watch over the seraglio of souls reserved for God. The nun was the Odalisque, the priest was the eunuch. The fervent were chosen in dreams and possessed Christ. At night, the beautiful nude young man descended from the cross and became the ecstasy of the cloistered one. Lofty walls guarded the mystic sultana, 
who had the crucified for her sultan, from all living distraction. A glance in the outer world was infidelity. The in pace replaced the leather sack. That which was cast into the sea in the east was thrown into the ground in the west. In both quarters women wrung their hands, the waves for the first, the grave for the last, here the drowned, there the buried. Monstrous parallel. Today the upholders of the past, unable to deny these things, have adopted the expedient of smiling at them. There has come into fashion a strange and easy manner of suppressing the revelations of history, of invalidating the commentaries of philosophy, of eliding all embarrassing facts and all gloomy questions. A matter for declamations, say the clever. Declamations repeat the foolish. Jean-Jacques, a declaimer. Diderot, a declaimer. Voltaire, on Colosse. Labar, and Sirvan, declaimers. I know not who has recently discovered that Tacitus was a declaimer, that Nero was a victim, and that pity is decidedly due to that poor Holofernes. Facts, however, are awkward things to disconcert, and they are obstinate. The author of this book has seen, with his own eyes, eight leagues distant from Brussels. There are relics of the Middle Ages there which are attainable for everybody. At the Abbey of Villers, the whole of the Oubliettes, in the middle of the field, which was formerly the courtyard of the cloister and on the banks of the till four stone dungeons half underground half under the water they were in pace each of these dungeons has the remains of an iron door a vault and a grated opening which on the outside is two feet above the level of the river and on the inside six feet above the level of the ground four feet of the river flow past along the outside wall the ground is always soaked the occupant of the in pace had the wet soil for his bed in one of these dungeons there is a fragment of an iron necklet riveted to the wall. In another there can be seen a square box made of four slabs of granite, too short for a person to lie down in, too low for him to stand upright in. A human being was put inside, with a cover lid of stone on top. This exists. It can be seen. It can be touched. These in pace, these dungeons, these iron hinges, these necklets that lofty peephole on a level with the river's current, that box of stone closed with a lid of granite like a tomb, with this difference, that the dead man here was a living being, that soil which is but mud, that vault hole, those oozing walls, what declaimers. End of Book 7, Chapter 2